be a joy and gladness and the bones that be a broken may rejoice. Hide your face through my sins and blot off all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart of God and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me out away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold with your guiding spirit. <coughs> And I will be transgressions away to you, and sinners shall be converted to you. Deliver me from God, the guiltiness of God, and of my salvation, and my tongue shall joyfully declare your righteousness. Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall speak of your praise. For you do not desire a sacrifice, so also would give it. You do not delight in burnt offering. Sacrifices to God that a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, God will not despise. <coughs> To put together the pleasure to Zion and build the walls of Jerusalem, and you shall be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, oblation, and full burnt offerings, then they shall offer bulls on your altar. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever in and to ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, God. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, God. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Apostles, martyrs, and prophets, fighters, and holy monks, and righteous men, who have fought the good fight to the end and kept the faith, since you have brought us in the presence of the Savior, we reverently greet you, pray to him on our behalf for the salvation of our souls. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Remember thy servants, O Lord, in thy love, and forgive them all the sins that they committed in this life. For not is without sin, but he who has found to give us a good department. Now, gather in them to ages of ages. Amen. <coughs> you are the true wine that gave forth the fruit of life, the birth giver of God. We pray to you, O Lady, intercede with the holy apostles and all the saints, that we have mercy on our souls. Blessed be the Lord God, blessed be the Lord, day after day, the God who saves us and bears our burdens, in spite of our sins, the God who saves. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. All holy Trinity, have mercy on us, Lord, cleanse us of our sins. Master, forgive our transgressions, for you will endow in us and heal our infirmities to the glory of your name. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, and the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Among the saints of Christ, rest the souls of your servants, for there is no pain, no grief, no sign, but life which has in the end. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. <coughs> Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. At all times and in every moment, you are worshipped and glorified in heaven and on earth, O Christ God, a patient, merciful, and compassionate one, who loved the just and have mercy on sinners, who call out to salvation by the promise of the blessings to come. Accept our prayers and style, Lord, and direct our lives according to your commandments. May our souls holy, our bodies, pure our judgments, correct, and our thoughts clean. Save us from all danger, evil, and pain, surround us with holy angels. So that being guarded and guided under their protection, we may come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge around which we glory. For you are blessed in the ages of ages. Amen. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. 
Now and ever and then, please just lead us. Amen. For our honorable literature, be the more glorious, be our prepared in the seraphim. For we thou art also officially the giver of God the word, to the first given of God we praise you. In the name of the Lord, Father, and the Lord, and May God be honorable. <clears throat> to us and bless us, shine the light of his face upon us and be merciful to us. Amen. O God, of us, the Father Almighty. <clears throat> o Lord, only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. What God had on power and mercy on me, a sinner, and by your judgments, save your Lord and servant. For you are blessed to the ages and ages. Amen. Come, let us worship and bow down before God, our King. Come, let us worship and bow down before Christ, our King and our God. Come, let us worship and bow down before Christ Himself, our King and our God. God, save me by your name and judge me by your strength. Hear my prayer, O God, give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen up against me, and oppressors seek after my soul. They have not set God before them. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is with those who hold my soul. He shall reward evil unto my enemies and cut them off in his truth. I will freely sacrifice to you, I will praise your name, O Lord, for his good. He has delivered me out of all trouble, but my eye has seen his desire upon my enemies. God, hear my prayer, do not hide from my petition, attend to me and hear me. I am grieved in my complaints and troubled because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked. For they cast iniquity upon me and are mad they hate me. My heart is severely pained within me, and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fear and trembling came upon me, and horror has overwhelmed me, and I said, O oh, that I had wings like a dove, and then I would fly away and be at rest. Indeed, I would wander far off and remain in the wilderness. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Destroy the Lord and divide their tongue of friends and violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go around and on its walls, and liquid and trouble are also in the midst of it. Destruction is in its midst. The seeds and God did not depart from its streets, for it was not an enemy who portion that I could bear it. Nor was the one who hastened me that did magnify himself against me, that I could have hidden from him. But it was you, a man, my equal, my guide, and my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together, walked in the house of God and company. Let death cease, and let them go down alive into hell, for wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and noon, I will pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He has redeemed my soul in peace for the battle which was against me, for there are many against me. God shall hear and afflict them, even he who abides no more. Because they do not change, therefore they fear not God. He has put forth his hands against those who are at peace with him, and he has broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smooth and butter, but words in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be ruled. The you, O God, shall put down and commit a destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not have all death and days, but I will trust in you. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He will say to the Lord, My protector, my refuge, my God, and my trust. And the Lord shall deliver you from the spirit of the power and from the service of destiny. He shall cover you with his shoulder, and beneath his wings he shall rest his foot. His truth shall be your shield and buckle. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the air that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noon day. A thousand shall fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the Lord of the Because you have said, O Lord, you are my hope, and make the most high of your No one will trouble fall you, nor shall any place be near your dwelling. For you shall give his angel charge for you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands, as you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the ass and the viper, the young lion and serpent, you shall trample on their foot. Because he has set his love upon me, I will deliver him, says the Lord. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. I will fill him with length of days, and show him my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now and ever, and as we each of the days to come. Hallelujah, 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 glory to God. Hallelujah, 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 glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, in giving birth and preserved your virginity, and calling the same who did not forsake the world of earth, you were God. You were translated to life from other life, and by your prayers to the last souls from death. Now, endeavor not to age of ages, amen. Being that we have no boldness in us because of our many sins, O Lord, and birth, you were God. Intercede with him who is born of you. 
Amen. 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 God, bearing Father John of Sinai, and remember today of the holy and righteous ancestors, dear the Lord, you now and all the saints. <clears throat> have mercy on us and save us, for he is good in the love of man. Master, give them blessing. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto each other, to each other. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In peace, from our Father, and from the Holy Spirit, so let us pray to the Lord.
preliminary comments is simply, you know, our Lord in the Gospel of Luke says, um, warns us about every idle word that we speak. And, and uh, there the word, it's usually translated idle word, but it's an unproductive word. It's a word that doesn't produce anything. We speak, but has no sort of purpose, no goal. It's just kind of taking up space or something like that. And so I, St. John of Sinai, when he uh, introduces this notion of talkativeness, well, it's already before him, but emphasizes this notion of talkativeness, it's just much words. And, and I mention that now because it's a, a bit of a difference between words with no purpose. You could just say one thing, but if it has no purpose, that sort of violates what our Lord has said. But then St. John draws our attention when we're just talking too much. And he uh, describes talkativeness in this way. Talkativeness is the throne of vainglory on which it loves to preen and show off. Talkativeness is a sign of ignorance, a doorway to slander, a leader of jesting, a servant of lies, the ruin of compunction, a summoner of despondency, a messenger of sleep, a dissipation of recollection, the end of vigilance, the cooling of zeal, and the darkening of prayer. Well, that's a pretty uh, disheartening collection of characteristics related to talking too much. And I simply want to note that those are all things that in the light of our Lord's words, that's what talkativeness produces. <laughs> talkativeness does produce something, but it produces these sort of uh, works of the flesh. And, and so we have to sort of be on guard. And in this day and age, you know, talkativeness takes on different forms than in John's day of age, in, in his age, in the sixth century, because now we can talk with our fingers <laughs> on social media. Nothing comes out of our mouth, but we're just as talkative as ever um, by engaging in this dialogue, this communication that has all of these characteristics in it. And if you think of the just the literature that's been written and evaluated in recent years on what some of the social media is doing, especially to the young people, with these issues of vainglory and self-image and not measuring up to these kind of strange ideals that people have of what a human being or a young woman or a young man is supposed to be like. And this is really unbelievably self-destructive or destructive to our culture. And so you can see these very characteristics of like talkativeness is, is the uh, is the sign of ignorance, and that certainly seems to characterize a lot of communication on the internet. And so these characteristics may not simply be things that are coming out of our mouth in this day and age. We need to be sort of cautious about our communication in many different contexts. And in contrast to this, St. John then gives the characterization of silence. He says that, that intelligent silence is the mother of prayer, freedom from bondage, the, cu the custodian of zeal, a guard on our thoughts, a watch on our enemies, a prison of mourning, a friend of tears, a sure recollection of death, a painter of punishment, a concern with judgment, servant, that means judgment of one's own second judgment, the second judgment of Christ, a servant of anguish, a foe of license, a companion of stillness, the uh, opponent of dogmatism, a growth of knowledge, a hand to shape contemplation, hidden progress, the secret journey upward. For the man who recognizes his sins has taken control of his tongue, while the chatter has yet to discover himself. That's a pretty amazing collection of things, and we know that we know that in our own life, a lot of times our talkativeness is simply because we don't feel comfortable with ourselves. We don't feel comfortable in the situation. And if we're easy and comfortable with ourselves, we're comfortable being silent. And this talkativeness gets in the way of even coming to know ourselves, to discover who we are. And so the invitation of silence is to enter into what really is a pretty uncomfortable spot and where we might feel judgment about the things that are within us, and we might feel a kind of anguish, and yet this is the pathway, this sort of upward progress, the progress up of not running from what's inside of our lives by 
talkiness, chatter, busyness, but rather this entering into this silence, attempting to. And I would just say in my own experience, what seems to be true is that when we silence the tongue, take some time, you know, every day, hopefully, and just try to be silent. And the tongue can be silent, but the mind is going faster than ever. But may, maybe we get frustrated and want to give up and we say it's not worth it, but I, I think that that's how the process works, is that we, we quiet the tongue uh, and this communication, this activity, um, in ways that allow us to notice what's going on inside so that we can talk to God and bring Christ into that inner life that we have in such a way that he can calm the inner storm and sort of going around and just sort of engaged in the outer storms of life if we separate ourselves from those and try to quiet our, our outer expression, then we'll be more aware of the inner storms and more aware of what Christ longs to heal. And so little by little, the outer silence will become an inner silence or a calmness is what St. John calls it. And he says that the lover of silence draws close to God. He talks to him in secret and God enlightens him. And so this is the pathway forward in some of the enlightenment of things in our own life that need cleansing or healing or freedom from bondage or whatever it might be. And, and this is the, the way forward to accomplish that. And then <clears throat> finally, St. John describes some of the causes of anger, he's, uh, causes of, of talkativeness. He says, someone who has asked me, want, me once about stillness told me that talkativeness invariably results from one of the following causes, from a bad or relaxed lifestyle. The tongue, he said, is a member of the body like the rest and therefore needs to be trained in its habits. This is really very interesting information because, you know, if you want to learn how to ride a bike, it takes time. If you want to learn how to play the piano, it takes time. You have to form certain habit patterns to get your sort of muscle memory to do the right thing. And, and what he really has in mind here with the use of the word habit, it's connected with the word virtue because it's not just getting your body to perform in a certain sort of way, but getting your desires and your emotions to go along with it. A virtue isn't just doing the right thing outwardly, but having the inner life and the outer life joined and combined in such a way that you're, you don't have this inner turmoil or this inner outer tension. And so the idea is our tongue needs to be trained in the very same way. And most of us don't think about training the tongue, but we would do well to try to do it, uh, especially the inclination toward you know, gossip and chatter. And so he wants us to uh, not be lazy or relaxed in our lifestyle in the sense of we have to take serious that this tongue needs to be trained just the way you would be trained to do any particular sort of musical instrument or athletic activity. And then he also says it comes from vainglory, which is interesting because he also said that was a consequence of it. And so we're talkative because we are vainglorious and then talkativeness sort of is a consequence or reveals that vainglory. And a particular um, A particular problem um, with ascetics, the vainglory is a particular problem with ascetics, or when it comes from gluttony, which again is a kind of a, um, um, inability to control our desires, just like controlling the desires of the tongue. And often if you look in the Father's Law, many, many different texts, when they talk about control of the tongue, they mean it both, they'll discuss at the same time, this is true in St. John Cassian, it's true in St. Nicodemus of the Holy Mountain and Spiritual Councils, the tongue is both the, the, the thing that they talk about when they're talking about uh, eating too much and also talking too much. So it's like one is it's connected in the, in the mind of the fathers as the source of gluttony or the instrument of gluttony and the instrument of, of incorrect speech. And so um, one sort of final thought about the talking in us in silence is that um, the uh, world in which we live in now is not simply one in which we're talking, but we're being inundated with all forms of media. So, you know, since the time of the radio, we've been able to just to sort of turn on noise and TV, turn on noise and, 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 and uh, video uh, input. And, now, of course, we all carry in our pockets phones that will 
be an endless source of distraction in our lives and we might not be saying anything, we might not be communicating, we might be just watching videos or something like that and, and, um, or, or, or observing things on the electronic devices that we have, but that's feeding a kind of inner talkativeness. Our mind is running, our mind is going, and, and so on the one hand, it's the things that St. John is talking about is about our expression of things going outward, but I think in the spirit of what he's saying, we have to be conscious of what we're letting come as input into our lives as well, because that's generating this, this it's riling us up. We watch the media and we get all upset and angry or disturbed or worried or fearful about what's going on in the world or, or what's happening in this or that part of, of our own nation or what people's political or social views are. Or, or whatever it might be, and that gets us worked up, and that's the sort of inner talking that's even if we're not expressing anything. And so just withholding talking or communication in a sense isn't enough for us. The silence that he talks about has to extend to what we allow to enter our ears as well as what we express with our mouth or with our fingers. And so <clears throat> Great Lent's a good time for us to practice this a little bit, to train our tongue, to train our ears, to be attentive to the use of our senses in the ways in which we're allowing ourselves to be calmed or to be worked up and distracted. And so in the time that we have, we'll have four more weeks of Great Lent and Holy Week, let us sort of be a, by the prayers of St. John, enter into a little bit of silence and stillness and see if that our Lord will enlighten us there. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord have 
Holy of the Holy Church of God and for the union of all of us, we pray unto the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Spirit, for those who will pray with faith, fight in the fear of God, let us pray unto the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we be delivered from all danger, affliction, anger, and need, let us pray unto the Lord. Lord, have mercy.
Amen. The President of our nation, all those in civil and military authority, the armed forces, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom. Amen. Mother Abbas, Gabriella, and the mothers and sisters of this holy monastery, as visitors, pilgrims, supporters, and benefactors, may the Lord God Remember in his kingdom. Amen. Those who brought these gifts and those for whom they were brought, the living and the dead, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom. Amen. Those who are ill, all those suffering from war and civil strife, those suffering in nursing homes and hospitals, those without a home and those who have no one to care for them, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom. Amen. Departed servant, our commander of Rome, and the great Stephen and Benedicta, the nuns, and Theodora, Seraphim, or Eustine, and Theodora, and Nicario, and all those who lie arrested in the cemetery of this holy monastery, all of our fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, pass this life before us in the hope of the resurrection, and all those who have passed this life without receiving <coughs> the hope, opportunity to receive the holy mysteries, may the Lord God remember them in his kingdom always. Now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. You and all Orthodox Christians, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom always. Now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Thank you. 
safety, honor, health, and length of days to rightly divide the word of your truth. Let us 
Having penetrated into the mystical darkness of contemplation, this new Moses, having been initiated into the secrets of the spiritual law and coming back down the mountain impassable, his face transfigured by divine grace was able to become for all the shepherd, the physician, and the spiritual master, carrying within him the book written by God. He did not have need of others' books to teach his monks the science of sciences and the, and the, and the art of arts. The abbot of Raithu, who was also named John, having been informed of the wonderful manner of life of the monks of Sinai, wrote to St. John, asking him to explain briefly, but in a methodical way, what those who had embraced the angelic life should do in order to be saved. He who did not know how to go against the wishes of another, thus engraved with the stylus of his own experience the tablets of the spiritual law. He presented his treaties as a ladder of 30 steps, like Jacob. He who supplemented the passions contemplated while he was lying on the bed of Assisi's. In this orthodox summa of the spiritual life, which had remained for centuries the outstanding guide to evangelical living, both for monks and for lay people, St. John does not institute rules, but by practical recommendations, <coughs> judiciously chosen details, and short pithy maxims and riddles, often full of humor, he initiates the soul into spiritual combat and the discernment of thoughts. His word is brief, dense, and tapered, and it penetrates like a sword to the depths of the soul, uncompromisingly, cutting out all self-satisfaction and tracing hypocritical asceses and egotism to their roots. Like that of St. Gregory in the theological domain, this word is the gospel put into practice, and it will lead most surely those who let themselves be impregnated, impregnated by it through an assiduous reading of, to the gates of heaven where Christ awaits us. At the end of his life, the blessed John designated his brother George, who had embraced the hesychastic life from the beginning of his renunciation as his successor at the head of the monastery. When he was about to die, George said to him, So you are abandoning me and leaving me. I prayed, however, that you would send me to the Lord first, for without you I cannot shepherd this, brother, this brotherhood. But St. John reassured him and said, Do not grieve and do not be afraid. If I find grace before God, I shall not let you complete even a year after me. And it was so. Ten months after John's falling asleep, George departed in his turn to the Lord. Through the prayers of your saints, Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. It is fitting for the just to give praise. Blessed are they who now has chosen and taken to thyself, O Lord. Their memorial is from generation to generation. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. In the fear of God, only in the faith and in love. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. God is the Lord, and has revealed himself to us. Receive the body.
Lord, and bless those who bless you and sanctify those who put their trust in you. Save your people and bless your heritage. Guard the fullness of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them by your divine power and do not abandon us who hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your church, to the clergy, to the civil authorities, and to all your people. For all that is God, everything that is perfect is given us from above, coming down from you, the Father of our lights, and we offer glory, thanks, and worship you to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now and ever, and unto ages of Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord, and so. Fifteen minutes after the lunch ends, we'll meet in the guest house, which if you don't know where that is, that's straight to the north of the church, right next door here, to the, my right here, that. And we'll do prayers together and make a lineup for um, confession for the afternoon. <clears throat> do the prayers while we master Lord Jesus Christ, our God, and mercy. 